You may remember from a previous video, I mentioned I'll be refinishing a piece for a local charity coming up September 23rd in our area. That'll be to help serve underprivileged youth in our community. So I've chosen this mid-century piece for that project. I will list those details in the description below as well. This is a Ward 6 drawer low boy dresser. Originally had a mirror attached. I'll be removing these brackets. There's one drawer that does need repair. Most of this is a walnut veneer. Unfortunately, the top is laminate. So for the first time, I'll be trying a walnut veneer on this. We'll see how that goes. I wanna say thank you to those of you who helped support this project through the Amazon wish list in my description. So I'm excited to use several of those products for this project as well. Let's get started.
So I realized towards the end of the scraping process that this is basically what you saw in the last video. So for all of you faithful subscribers, I apologize you have to see this in back-to-back -back videos, but for true restoration, 75% of the work is prep work, scraping, sanding, and it's no different for this one. So I'm gonna go with the 220 grit on the orbital sander, prep this for staining, and then the final top coat. I'm just prepping for the veneer and I wanted to take this opportunity to, to respond to a recent comment on one of my last videos where a lady mentioned that a lot of YouTube flippers show themselves shopping in big box stores and she's absolutely right. I want to mention that most of the products that I buy are from my locally owned Ace Hardware and if I can't find something there I also go to a local woodworking store which I recently discovered in my area. The things are more expensive there, but I like supporting local businesses. And the gentleman that works there has been there for 24 years. And I thought it was funny on the way out the door today. I'm sure he took this quote from someone else, but he said, if you strive for perfection, you're gonna end up with just okay. And if you strive for just okay, you're gonna end up with some good firewood. So I'm gonna continue striving for perfection, hoping for just okay. I've never tried this step before, but let's get started. I purchased this roll of walnut veneer at the woodworking shop. It's a two foot by eight foot section of walnut veneer. I'll post a link in the description of walnut veneer that can be purchased online as well. Here I'm going to lay out the sheet of veneer, make sure I, the patterns are gonna line up. And I just wanna make sure I leave about an inch overlay on all sides. For the next step, I'll be using DAP contact cement with a foam roller to apply the contact cement to the back side of the veneer as well as to the top of the laminate dresser. I scuffed the laminate dresser with 100 grit sandpaper, so that's ready to go. And I'll also mention, I, I try my best to be as transparent as possible on my channel. And the good news, my channel just recently became eligible for monetization, which basically means I now get paid for ads that go into my videos. So I try and keep as many ads out of my videos as possible for your benefit. 
but that is also a way to help support the channel. So I've also listed in the description other ways to help support the channel. So if you're interested in that, I certainly appreciate it. Otherwise, just a thumbs up and a subscription to this channel definitely helps me keep going. I know there's a common misconception with the uh, YouTube furniture flippers that we constantly flip furniture pieces for massive profits, but for example, this project will take me about three days and this will be donated to a local charity. So anything uh, that helps regarding the ads and the view time is, is keeping this channel going, so I certainly appreciate the help. I finished applying the contact cement to the top of the dresser. I'll lay out these dowels. Once the veneer makes contact, there's no pulling this off, so I want to make sure it's all lined up. I've never done this before, so I wanted to make sure I purchased a J-roller. It's probably not necessary for this step. You could use a board to press this down, but I'll likely be doing this a lot in the near future, so I'm glad I purchased the J-roller. I'll link that product in the description as well. This part of the video may not appeal to most of the viewers, but I wanted to take a moment to show some of the basics of using a router like this. I inherited this from a family member, so it's not necessary to go out and purchase one of these if you're only doing one or two projects. Here I'm just pulling the wrench out, loosening up the bit that's in here. I'll replace it with a bit I just purchased from Home Depot. This one has a guide bearing or that spinning wheel there. This is the flush mount carbide bit that's going to just make a nice flush cut with the side of the dresser when I go to cut the veneer. I'll show the depth adjustment in a moment. I glued a few pieces of scrap veneer to some scrap wood to show a few methods you could use to cut the veneer on a dresser like this. You could just use a sharp razor blade if you didn't have an expensive router. Once you get going with the blade, it makes a nice clean cut. You can always just go back with 150 or even 220 grit sandpaper and hand sand so that this veneer is flush with the dresser. On the right hand side of the router, I'm just adjusting the dial, which changes the depth of the bit. Just needs to be approximate in this case. I wanna make sure the roller or the bearing has a nice flat surface against the dresser and that the bit is actually cutting the veneer or laminate. So time to try this for real. I'm starting on the back side since I've never done this before. I want to make sure there aren't any issues with this process. Seems to be going pretty smooth. I've taped the sides and the front of the dresser just so this bearing doesn't leave any marks along the edge of the dresser. You can see on the front side of the dresser, all I'm doing is pushing the veneer down. I realize it's about halfway through and rather than try and fix it and screw something up, I just decided to keep going. I'll come back with a sharp blade, clean this right off and then run right back over with the router again. So 
So there were a few marks left in the tape, so I'm glad I used the tape to protect the front side of the dresser. I'll come in now with 150 grit sandpaper, get rid of most of the residue, and follow up with 220 grit sandpaper once the tape is removed. I was actually very pleased with this process once it was smoothed out with 220 grit sandpaper. Nice flush surface. So we're finally ready for staining and as I explained this process the mic was not plugged in so the cameraman has been reassigned. Bear with me on the, on the mic. I'm ready to stain. I just went over this entire piece with a vacuum cleaner and the air compressor to try and get off as much dust as possible. I'm going to stick with General Finishes gel stain. I'm going to give this a good stir before I use it. I've never used nutmeg, so I'm going to try nutmeg this time. I typically like to use candlelight, but I always want to keep trying new things on the channel. Unfortunately, this is what I have to stir. You just want to give it a good stir. 